entire Department of English and Cultural Studies at Christ University. Uh, those of us who have joined the previous sessions of this webinar series, uh, welcome to you all. And those who have registered for this particular talk, a very warm hello. Uh, today is a very special and a very apt and a timely talk. And the speaker uh, himself is uh, somebody who can really take us on a journey that we have all been going through together. I will introduce the speaker just in a bit. But uh, before that, uh, let me take a moment to also tell you about the Mesoterra series, which actually started uh, during the pandemic year that was uh, last year. And uh, it was a webinar series that we thought of organizing as a department where the idea was to bring in people from across disciplines, not just academic, but any kind of literary and arts and cultural background to have conversations which are more open ended, which can have, uh, you know, discussions around all the kind of cultural and social issues that we kind of deal with in our daily lives. So it gives me great, great pleasure that we have been able to continue this series even uh, after the semi uh, you know, uh, post pandemic life that now we are all uh, living and inhabiting. Um, so having said that, uh, I welcome everyone and I hope that uh, you can keep your audios and videos uh, muted throughout the session. Uh, there will be a question answer round uh, towards the end of the talk once the speaker is done talking and uh, post that you are free to also unmute and also, you know, uh, talk to the speaker directly. But for the th entire session, I request all of you to keep it muted for network issues and other things. Uh, today, we have a speaker who uh, has kind of really intrigued my interest ever since I got in touch with him. We have Manash Fira uh, Firak Bhattacharji. He is a poet, scholar, writer, translator uh, of, uh, of many things. And he's also been uh, associated with the Jawaharlal Nehru University, in New Delhi as the political science scholar. He is the author of the newly published book, which is what he's going to talk uh, more in detail about today, called The Town Slowly Empties on Life and Culture During Lockdown. This was printed by Head Press Copper Coin in 2021, February. Uh, looking for uh, the nation towards another idea is another book by Manash. And Manash has also written uh, Galib Storm and other poems. His writing, apart from regular contributions to The Wire, has also appeared in The New York Times, the LA Review of Books, Greneca, World Literature Today, The Hindu, The Indian Express, among others. He has taught uh, lyric poetry and literary journalism at Ambedkar University in the past as well. So a uh, very warm welcome to uh, Manash here. Manash, I hope you can hear me. All right, uh, so uh, you can unmute yourself now. Yeah, so uh, I will just give you, I'll give you the floor in a minute. A little bit about Manash's new book, which is what the entire conversation is going to be around, is, uh, is, a, is, a, is the most timely kind of a book that we can all pick, our, pick and read at this point because it talks about the pandemic. It talks about, a uh, very unprecedented uh, kind of a lockdown that we all kind of survived or semi survived and kind of really uh, you know was was forced to kind of think about a lot of things that we you know on a daily basis probably took for granted so his uh, like just having read a few pages and a couple of chapters from his work uh, really intrigued my interest and i'm sure all of us will be able to relate to his talk more than anything else because it talks about the everyday it talks about the life during the lockdown within the household it is a uh, it is a work that he has written with i think a lot of personal uh, uh, you know a reflection he has been able to sort of bring in his own personal experience of living the lockdown uh, the need to write about something like this which i'm sure all of us at some point thought about it in fact uh, I read somewhere that, you know, if you read the book uh, that he has written, uh, you will feel that, oh, this is what exactly I also wanted to write or something related to this was I also wanted to write. This is also what I felt during the lockdown or this is also what I thought during the time when I was alone, you know, uh, in my house with family or with nobody. So in that sense, uh, I'm sure it's going to be a very exciting talk. Um, uh, so thank you for in, uh, on behalf of the entire department who accept our invitation. And uh, now I give you the floor, Manash. You can go on to talk 
as you had planned and then we can take some questions from the audience manash over to you thank you uh, i hope uh, i am audible yes you are right uh, thank you so much for that uh, lovely introduction sonia uh, uh, to begin with i would like to thank uh, rashmi for uh, in inviting me uh, for the talk today um, and uh, also to uh, the department of cultural studies um, in uh, christ university uh, uh, i'm very thankful to all the few and uh, also to uh, uh, rashmik's colleague uh, sonia for uh, coordinating with me and for this lovely introduction uh, i would also like to uh, thank uh, and welcome all of you uh, who have joined this uh, this this talk here today uh from uh, both from uh, uh, from the university uh, the students and, and and teachers from the university as as well as friends from uh, across uh, uh, the world you know uh, and the and the country uh, so uh, yeah so uh, so when i was uh, asked uh, to think of uh, some some theme uh, on on which i wanted to uh, speak on i i i thought uh, uh, memory would be something uh, very uh, uh, kind of uh, obvious uh, sort of thing to speak on because uh, not 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 only uh, does the book talk about uh, my own personal memory and sometimes i also uh, go into um, a certain public uh, memory uh which uh, always of course has uh, our own individual uh take and image uh, and memory on uh, what what we all remember together as events uh, out out there in the world uh so apart from that uh, uh what i also uh, understood later when i was reading my own book that uh, the whole book as as such is also a sort of document Uh, about uh, those uh, those days uh, of the first lockdown that was uh, declared and and so in a way there are sort of layers of uh, uh, this this aspect of memory that that is infused in the whole uh, project uh, as well as uh, uh, very specific in instances in the book uh, i'll just show you the uh, the book the cover this is the book and uh, it interestingly uh, the cover of the book uh, this image is uh, by uh, this uh, young uh, photographer and uh, computer science uh, engineer uh, his name is uh, abdullah sagir ahmed and he he, uh, he works in bangalore so this image is actually uh, also from bangalore uh, it is from from his uh, home uh, during uh, roza uh, last year so yeah so it's a, a lovely cover and and this image sort of uh, spoke to me the moment i saw it because it 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 has the image of the city the image of the uh, the, uh, the barbed uh, uh, rods of a uh, window and uh, the sky uh, and so it 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 gave me sort of the deep of an image uh, for uh, uh, for the lockdown uh, so yeah uh, to begin with when uh, the uh, you know uh, 2020 started uh, we were all uh, of course in involved in our own uh, sort of uh, world our own lives i uh, had started the year by uh, visiting two lit uh, literary festivals uh, one in hyderabad the other in kerala and uh, i came back and within a very short time we had a very very uh, dis uh, disturbing event here in delhi of engineer riots uh, taking place and uh, we were not really uh, in a very uh, uh, kind of uh, you know uh, a stable and uh, good sense of mind uh, when the lockdown sort of uh, fell upon us and uh, so it was almost like uh, you know one layer after the other uh, uh, things uh, very disturbing uh, Uh, well, uh, occurring in 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 our lives, and it was getting very difficult to really uh, settle down and 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 please please ourselves. Uh, where where do you go? What do you think? 
uh, what do you take note of right now? Each event galloping, you know, uh, one after the other uh, was sort of, uh, you know, uh, for, forcing us uh, to take cognizance of, uh, to, to respond to, to think about. And uh, so it was around these circumstances that uh, this lockdown happened. And uh, when, uh, uh, when it was about to be declared, uh, I uh, was wondering what to do. And uh, there, there was this one book that I uh, was writing, writing again, um, a book of political nonfiction, which I'm still you know, trying, trying, trying to finish now, um, uh, which I thought uh, I will totally immerse myself into, uh, now knowing that you know, there's no going out and uh, there's a lot of time, time at home uh, and uh, to work on our own uh, things. Uh, but when the lockdown really uh, happened, uh, it was such a dramatically new experience both uh, personally um, as well as the neighborhood, the whole world, you know, friends were texting from um, all over the world uh, about how they were feeling. They were very disturbing news pouring in from uh, various uh, places uh, as much as uh, this whole difficulty that we were also experiencing from our own uh, very uh, uh, privileged sort of spaces but still uh, disturbing enough about uh, how, how to really deal with life and fear and, and paranoia. And so under these circumstances, uh, you know, a totally new uh, sort of idea emerged. I thought of uh, really writing down this experience because I felt that uh, something very really dramatically new was happening to the very idea of, 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 of life and the very structure of, of life that we are new of. Uh, we all know about pandemics, but I had not really, uh, uh, you know, read too, too much about it. And, and so now uh, was the time that I was really uh, reading and everybody was reading and, and, and sharing a lot of ideas. Um, so that is when I decided to write this journal um, at, at a daily basis and sort of uh, respond and, 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 and see what sort of meaning uh, I'm able to make of uh, these days. So uh, one of the first things, in in, in fact, uh, which was uh, sort of ironic, and which uh, uh, caught my attention. This is something I have uh, described a little bit in the book. So I will read out uh, a little from the book and then expand on uh, this whole idea and how it was uh, sort of similar uh, to how I, I I was feeling right then. So this is from an entry um, from um, March 25th. Uh, the title of the section is Of Trees, the Forest, and the Fox's Wedding. Uh, the pages in my old copy of the Book of Laughter and Forgetting were falling apart. I sat down on a cane stool to read, experiencing a forgotten familiarity of the story. I did not have to read much to come across these lines that ring truer now, at least for us in India, than when Kundera wrote it. So I'm quoting from uh, the Book of Laughter and Forgetting. The assassination of Allende quickly covered over the memory of the Russian invasion of Bohemia. The bloody massacre in Bangladesh caused Allende to be forgotten. The din of war in the Sinai Desert drowned out the groans of Bangladesh. The massacres in Cambodia caused the Sinai to be forgotten, and so on and on and on. Everyone has completely forgotten everything. Nowadays, time moves forward in rapid pace. Kundera Road of History galloping fast. I'm thinking of the chain of events in India just before the lockdown was announced. The lockdown brought new difficulties for the poor Muslims who fled their homes during the Delhi riots and were living in relief shelters. So uh, this was one of the things that, uh, uh, you know, uh, was quite obvious uh, to notice that time was, uh, time, time was in a, a different kind of zone. Think, things were happening really fast. And perhaps it affected the book as well, because though um, like I said, um, the book, uh, again, you know, uh, 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 sort of paradoxically, even as I was trying to address the present and uh, the intensely present moment, 
it also inevitably happened to be something about the past. I was constantly uh, uh, relapsing into the past, thinking about past events, uh, going into the past. Uh, so, uh, so this whole uh, flip flop between past and uh, and present has, has started uh, taking place right in, uh, from the beginning of the book, and that sort of told me that uh, that. This, the, the, there was something very, uh, you know, unique happening to how memory was uh, getting structured, and uh, here uh, there are a few things I would, uh, for instance, like to uh, point out. One was uh, How this uh, whole idea of memory splitting past in quick succession uh, meant that uh, each memory or each sort of thought was being interrupted. So it was, you know, uh, like one memory interrupting another in quick su succession. Um, the way, you know, uh, the past is interrupted by the present and the present interrupted by the past. So each event e experience was almost like pushing one another and, and, and taking its own place. There was a sort of crowd of memories and uh, which, 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 which suddenly uh, happened under lockdown, which, uh, which did not uh, really, uh, make me sort of rest in one memory for a long time. So there are many ways in which uh, memories occur and the way they are structured uh, in, in writing. Uh, in, in my case, I found that uh, since there was uh, such a flood of memories and I, I also had to deal with the present, um, I could not really stick to one memory for too long. So I saw myself catching on to some, uh, some uh, uh, you know, object from the past, uh, some, some, small de some small detail, which again was then interrupted by, by, by something else. So this was not very much a sort of... Uh, uh, you know, a Proustian sort of uh, detailing of memory and sort of comfortable in, you know, in, in opening up and, de and detailing one sort of memory. It, it was more of a very restless sort of relationship with the memory where things were just coming and going, sometimes structured by the uh, particular theme that I was, uh, uh, you know, so, uh, sort of trying to chase. And in this, in fact, uh, in this whole kind of anxiety about uh, recollection uh, of things past in the present, where the present was already thick with so many things. And here I would also like to uh, uh, point out that uh, there was also a new uh, dimension that, that I could see uh, of the past and the present, which, which I'll come to later, which I thought was doing something really new to our understanding of memory, very different from, say, the way Proust um, understood it the way uh, even later when uh, Walter Benjamin is writing about uh, Proust's, uh, you know, relationship with memory, his 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 writing of memory. Um, so whether it is um, a Proust's writing, whether it's uh, uh, even uh, Bergson's, uh, for example, you know, Henry Bergson's uh, work uh, on memory, uh, matter and memory, or uh, uh, you know, later when uh, Benjamin is, is sort of uh, thinking and uh, analyzing those aspects of memory, I, I, I thought we had really moved away uh, in, in, in some very uh, fundamental ways from, from, from those times and, and the way they looked at memory then. I will come into that in a short while. Uh, I would, in fact, uh, uh, next try to uh, point out this aspect about this distinction between uh, uh, speed and forgetting. Uh, uh, because uh, this is something, in fact, uh, Benjamin very interestingly mentions. He has this uh, famous essay, some of you would have uh, read it, uh, called On the Image of Proust, and uh, where uh, Benjamin is, is talking about uh, Proust's uh, remembrance of things past. And he makes the point in that uh, essay that uh, Proust's uh, memory, uh, Proust's, uh, you know, memory writing, 
uh, or Bruce's remembrance is not so much about memory alone, but a lot of it is about forgetting. And uh, he, he, in fact, uh, says that uh, there is something uh, very, uh, you know, uh, so, uh, so this whole spontaneous remembering in a way is uh, also very much uh, trying to record and trying to convince the reader of what he was forgetting. So in a way, an act of memory is also uh, sort of the betrayal of this uh, this this whole uh, you know uh, a state of anxiety, uh, which is also a, a, you know of of, of thing, a slipping uh, uh, past past you. This is slightly different, uh, for instance, from say what uh, Milan Kundera talked about. Uh, you know, this whole thing about uh, the famous uh, quote of his uh, that uh, the struggle of uh, the, the struggle against power is is the struggle uh, against forgetting. That is uh, that is, uh, in fact, a struggle of the witness of witnessing the act of witnessing uh, where you are called upon uh, to sort of remember in the face of official sort of diktat of forgetting uh, this is also something that we are facing uh, right 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 now uh, Benjamin is, uh, is saying something slightly different he is saying that um, that it is actually against this anxiety that he is forgetting his past life is is, is precisely when he is trying to detail um, as much uh, as possible what he remembers so there is something interesting in the parallel uh, I want to draw from that and this uh, which I'll just read out to you Uh, this is about uh, uh, the Prime Minister speaking to the nation. Uh, this is uh, on the 24th of March. Sorry, it's 23rd perhaps, uh, because I'm writing on the 24th. Uh, uh, I make my morning cup of Earl Grey tea, except for the sound of the birds, which I don't mind. I write soundlessly for hours. I cannot hear the very editable vendors cry out, as I usually do in the morning. The sudden lockdown must have made it difficult for vehicles carrying essential food items to cross interstate borders. It feels like a time of war, a world of adults having to rush outdoors, sorry, indoors like children. Everyone was speculating on what the Prime Minister would say in his address to the nation at 8 p.m. He congratulated people for maintaining a self-imposed curfew. But in a grim tone, he reiterated the need for further and stricter rules to combat the pandemic. He announced a nationwide lockdown of 21 days. The nation was under a three-week curfew. Ironically, it was not the prime minister who declared the emergency. Writers, journalists, and doctors had already announced a medical and health emergency. The PM said, I quote, Forget what it is like to step out of the house for 21 days. He implored the nation to, for to forget. You must forget the time you stepped out of your home. You must forget the footsteps of freedom. Delete the memory of the past. From now, you won't just miss the world. You will miss yourself. You will miss yourself in the world. But the world will also vanish. It will disappear into itself. Pandemic time is a frightening zone where you experience the forgetting of time. So, so since so there are two aspects here. Uh, uh, one is, of course, this realization that uh, the present is barred. You are totally in the present. But the present itself is barred from you. You are barred from the present. So it is all past then. Uh, so life becomes sort of pushed back into the past. Life becomes all memory. Memory becomes life. So this whole thing we talk about, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in terms of all narrative writing being in some way or the other memory writing. So uh, so this becomes almost absolute uh, in, in terms of life as, as well, where 
the present is sort of absent. Uh, so it, it is all past. You are living fully in the present, uh, and yet it is debarred from you. Also, this thing about space, that you are not supposed to go out. The good citizen is not supposed to stay, step out of the house. So there is a sort of uh, territoriality uh, to, uh, to your uh, physical move, move movement. And you can also imagine perhaps a sort of territoriality uh, around your um, uh, mental imagination as well, though by nature, uh, thinking, imagination, memory, they're all sort of uh, uh, deterritorialized de um, sort of, um, you know, aspects of, rea of reality. Also, um, this whole forbidden territory that, that the outside is forbidden territory, the present is also a forbidden territory. So again, you are, you know, sort of forced to relapse into the past where you can sort of cross the borders uh, of the present. That is one. The other aspect of it is also uh, something that I've dealt with uh, well, uh, dealt in else, elsewhere in, in this book, with, 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 which I'm not going to address today. There's something about this whole line, you know, that, that you shouldn't cross this. And, and we are aware of this line, which in many ways, you know, uh, we, we see in uh, social practice, uh, this whole line of uh, touchable and the untouchable, uh, the line um, of sort of uh, prop, of proximity and, and distance. In a way, uh, also uh, the Lakshman Rekha, you know, uh, which is sort of drawn um, against your uh, existence and against your your desire as a moral norm. But here, uh, it, it uh, that whole idea of the line, that you can't cross the line, was given to you not so much in, in moral terms as, as, as much as in biological terms, because you're biological existence was in peril. Uh, so uh, to, to kind of save your life, um, you were given, uh, given this, uh, this, this new sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, biological border, uh, so to say, uh, by uh, the state. Uh, so so these, these were two uh, aspects around the question of life and forgetting which uh, I uh, thought about uh, when the uh, Prime Minister made that uh, address. Um, so there are um, other uh, aspects about uh, memory uh, that I draw uh, here. One, of course, is uh, nature, and um, and uh, this whole uh, this uh, this whole thing that was really uh, how how people were pausing to take pictures of flowers or birds. There's a friend of mine who was telling me he was actually recording bird speech. And things that uh, they would have never, um, it would have never occurred to them to do uh, such thing before. So what, so what was this return to nature really doing? In a very interesting moment when we are facing the Anthropocene, it is as if that this, it, it needed uh, the pandemic for people to really sort of turn back to nature, open one's eyes to nature, open one's ears to nature. People were listening, hearing nature. Um, and there were other kinds of uh, landscapes also uh, that uh, memory, so to say, uh, during the lockdown was opening oneself into. There's one such uh, interesting uh, uh, memory, uh, which I will uh, read and then, then um, sort of uh, uh, talk about a little bit. This is about um, my childhood uh, you know, uh, memory of uh, Shantaniketan, uh, uh, you know, uh, where uh, you have Tagore's uh, Vishwa Bharati. And uh, I had, uh, so there was a, a kind of a family uh, friend who used to uh, uh, invite us there on the occasions. And uh, so suddenly, uh, uh, through certain aspects of uh, my thinking about uh, certain things, you know, uh, particularly childhood, uh, I uh, sort of uh, took that uh, detour of, of Shantaniketan and I'll just read out a, a, a few things that I wrote about uh, what I recollected of that place. The Garden of Eden is the Garden of Childhood, where innocence and temptation live side by side. The erotic charge of temptation comes from its lure of innocence. Innocence is being inside an eggshell, a face we gradually and reluctantly break out of. My paradise idol 
or Garden of Eden will always remain Shantaniketa. The university town where the poet Rabindranath Tagore founded the Vishwabharati with its green, uneven meadows, tall trees, filtering sunlight, the Mayana bird, an occasional drove of donkeys, with so much silence that you must scream to know you exist. During summer holidays, we would visit the family of my father's friend in Shantaniketan. While the elders were busy in conversation or singing songs, I would be playing in the meadow with their daughter who was a little older than me. We were barefoot like animals. We played hide and seek and catch me if you can. Flirtatious names for games designed for children. We were also on the swing where with every tinge of, uh, with every lunge of the swing, I experienced the lunging bits of feeling, just like in A.K. Ramanujan's poem, looking for a cousin on the swing. Since then, I looked for her in every swing. Uh, so I was uh, remembering uh, this uh, moment uh, in Shantaniketan during childhood. Uh, there is another moment uh, which I, uh, which is not part of the book, but where uh, uh, I sort of experience a very, very different uh, sort of uh, encounter with my own memory, which which, which then uh, gets colored now as I think think back on uh, the uh, the earliest days, and uh, so that happened when just a few years ago. Uh, in decades after my uh, those those childhood visits, I'd gone to Shantaniketan with my friend. Um, I was really eager to show her that, that particular part of the meadow uh, where uh, I had played and spent uh, time. In. And uh, I just thought I'd take her there and, and, and show that absolutely wonderful place. And so we took a rickshaw and we went there. And we kept circling around that that space where the meadow was supposed to be just waiting for me to uh, say hello and, and, and to show it to my friend. Uh, but there was no meadow. And um, so, I, so I tried to con con convince the, uh, you know, the rickshaw puller uh, to take me. And, and he, he tried he his best to go on, uh, around and on the whole place. And he sort of gave up after a point and tried to convince me that there's no such place. And he hadn't heard, heard of the space that I was uh, you know, trying to convince him about. And uh, I finally realized that the meadow has, you know, ha had been taken over by, by, by buildings and by roads and the place no longer ex existed. Now, it wasn't, uh, objectively speaking, too difficult for any adult, mature person uh, to really realize that, look, this is what has happened in all these years. It's very natural for you know, houses and, 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 and streets to come up and, and a certain kind of place go, uh, gone. But because the place was uh, so integral to my memory, there was such an intense uh, relationship that I shared with it. I just refused uh, to uh, to believe and, and, and there was no uh, rational sort of uh, explanation uh, that I could, uh, you know, uh, fall, fall into. And so I, so uh, that really disturbed me a uh, lot. And uh, so ob objectively speaking, we understand that there has been a devastation uh, that, uh, that uh, we face in, in, um, in our relationship with the memory. Memory is no longer ever the place that we can visit, whether that place has been physically sort of eliminated um, or, or, or not. All places in memory, or most places in memory are sort of um, changed, uh, devastated by, by, by time. By by ruin, and in that that sense, uh, mem memories also uh, you know in, in in many ways very fundamental to what uh, say the Jena romantics in the you know late seventeenth eighteenth century in Germany when they were trying to understand modernity through the idea of the fragment. Uh, and the idea of 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 writing as fragment, the idea of writing as something prov provisional as something that can never be matched with a sort of a totality or a total image of something that you want to capture, that writing by by it, its own nature, by, by, by its own structure, uh, can only be nothing else but fragments of what you can capture. Is somewhere also talking about memory, because if writing is memory and all writing, at least the writing of this kind, you know, of all narrative writing, so to say, is memory, uh, 
then uh, there is something of a fragment that we can only uh, you know uh, sort of uh, recapture uh, from memory so so even if we uh, you know um, understand for example uh, the idea of memory as an idea of the encounter uh, uh, there also uh, we will find that uh, there, there is something of memory which again is the re-encountering of the object of desire or the object of life or the object of of what you an encounter as a lived experience uh, which is to uh, to say that uh, this idea of the encounter which is about something which is about someone which is about often the something in someone uh, that is also sort of uh, restructured when you uh, you know uh, sort of um, imagine uh, those uh, very specific uh, objects uh, of experience through memory. So that is also uh, something uh, where memory changes uh, forever the nature of the subject. Okay. Let me read you out uh, something else uh, now to uh, to talk about uh, places uh, that. Uh, occur in memory but no longer exist so uh, what of uh, the memory of places and, and people uh, uh, that do not exist anymore some places like times do not exist anymore I remember visiting the bookstore book firm at Connaught Place one morning around 15 years ago there I met an old jail friend Andali who now in the uh, is in the employment of the railway. He was taking the evening train back to Mumbai where he lived. We collected the book we had been searching for and decided to revisit old times over beer at Volga, a red carpet and delightfully cheap and laid back bar. I occasionally frequented the place but my ties with it were intense. A friend once uh, called me in the afternoon. Uh, as he spoke, I interrupted him and asked him, are you outside Volga by any chance? Uh, he was taken aback. Um, he looked around him himself. Uh, he, 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 looked, he looked around wherever he was standing, he told me later. Um, and he asked me, uh, how, how, how the hell do you know uh, that I'm outside Volga? Uh, so, so I had caught the sound of the, the flutist um, who uh, uh, you know, uh, who was famous uh, there, and he would uh, always uh, like play that one particular song from the film Hero, and uh, and uh, nobody in the city I, I I knew could 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 would would, would play that uh, song like him, and 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 so I could easily uh, uh, realize that he he was right there. Uh, so neither Bookworm uh, nor Volga uh, exists today. Uh, so, uh, so there are also these sort of um, ad, ad devastations that happen um, in memory, where you are uh, not uh, visiting places that exist. You are also uh, not visiting uh, some, sometimes people. Uh, so, what what do these uh, sort of uh, devastations uh, cause? Uh, to our uh, idea of memory is is something that uh, I was also think, thinking about.
yeah. Also, you know, uh, uh, the fact that these uh, memories were coming and, and, and going not really randomly because, uh, you know, there was uh, something uh, designing them secretly because uh, what uh, often happens uh, uh, during the writing of uh, memory is uh, that uh, a certain theme or a certain sequence come, comes into being on its own. We, you did have have to then uh, trace back and realize what exactly is 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 it tied to what is it exactly trying to tell you. Uh, so um, so that will, uh, the nature of memory, like the nature of most most things, is is sort of revealed uh, uh, as an afterthought because after it has already formed and 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 try to tell you uh, what uh, it is uh, about. There, in fact, uh, this whole idea of you know, going back and forth, um, and and uh, sort of uh, emerging uh, out of its own, is 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 is, is something which is again um, to go back to uh, sort of Proust's uh, idea of um, memory as as involuntary, right? As, as as something which is triggered off by 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 something, some smell, some object, anything that uh, imme immediately takes you uh, to the, the past. So it is not a conscious thing in itself. So in my case, I thought that uh, memories were pretty much coming and going as they please. Um, I, for instance, did not feel to be an active agent. A memory was the active agent. And, and this is something that I've uh, thought, thought about, not only vis-a-vis -vis dreams, dreams, are also, uh, dreams also have certain um, uncanny similarity with memories. In fact, the uh, the crux of the similarity is sort of uncanny. It is the Freudian un un uncanny, which sort of relates uh, dreams with uh, memory. And uh, I uh, uh, realized that I was not the active agent. It was um, memory, uh, which which was the active agent, and I was merely uh, you, you know sort of writing down what memory was dictating to me and in a way i have joked about um, this even in the book uh, some somewhere which is not a, a, a joke at all but uh, uh, something i quite uh, seriously believe in but uh, but you can also con consider it um, a joke uh, uh, which is that uh, uh, this book uh, which is dedicated to the U the U eucalyptus tree outside my house um, so uh, I dedicate it to the tree partly because I felt uh, that they, uh, there are you know, ghosts uh, living in the tree, and these ghosts are um, you know many kinds of ghosts, in, 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 including the ghosts of an ancestors who were really uh, sort of telling um, me uh, to write this book, and uh, uh, this was an interesting. Uh, thing for me to feel because uh, I've always, uh, you know, since since the time uh, I, I read uh, uh, this uh, Portuguese poet, Fernando Pessoa, I have, I, I have come to strongly believe in the, uh, what you may call uh, the non-autonomous or uh, the heteronymous idea of writing, that, that writing is, is, is something that is dictated to you by another force and uh, and and so there is something heteronymous or, or there's this force of heteronomy uh, which is working behind us uh, which is making us write what what we write and 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 i think particularly when it comes to memory writing uh, this idea of of something triggering off memory something that you are not aware of uh, probably let's say uh, you know ghosts uh, are are really uh, making you write something. So there, uh, what you really think of yourself as a writer then, uh, you know, that uh, a writer is sup uh, supposed to be the man of imagination, the man who has autonomy, the man who has agency and your writing. But what 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 to make of uh, this uh, realization that it is actually memory which is writing, you know, you are nothing but 
but your memory. So, so this whole fiction of the I, the whole fiction of the the autonomous subject, uh, goes into you know, thin air, um, and you really realize that uh, uh, it is the sum of what you remember. It is uh, other forces. It is this these these this metaphor of ghosts, uh, you know, voices that are whispering um, into uh, your head. Which is actually making right. So, so your voice, so to say, the, the voice of the writer is probably uh, perhaps not really the voice of an autonomous, um, you know, kind, kind of stable self, but uh, but uh, uh, the self which is which is dictated by voice uh, from elsewhere. This is also uh, this this is also an aspect which interests me when I think of, for example, and this is something I have dedicated a whole section to. Um, on uh, larger, you know, disasters that take place in this world, uh, and in this case, I'm thinking about uh, scientific disasters. So I talk, I talk about um, two di uh, disasters which I juxtapose um, vis-a-vis each each other: Bhopal and Chernobyl, and and how the disaster in Chernobyl, uh, you know, uh, made a, a, a writer like Svetlana Alexovich uh, really go looking for voices. Uh, and, 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 and voices which remember uh, the whole devastation of the place. And, and these are voices uh, that really speak in, the, uh, in her books as voices. Mm, and, and, and through that voices, you kind of hear the voice of the place. And uh, Svetlana herself uh, is, 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 is sort of relegates herself to the background. And it is through these other voices, uh, the voices of other people, uh, that she speaks to us. So this is almost like a, you know, like a real practical demonstration that that if you have to recapitulate something very intense, something which is larger than you, uh, perhaps you can only take recourse to voices and, and sometimes not voices of your own. So like I said that I was haunted or I felt I was haunted by 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 this ghost from, from, from the tree or other voices from the past, you know, my friends, my old neighbors, the gardener uh, from my old house in Assam, the uh, the the barber um, that I, I used to visit as a child, that 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 these people um, were speaking uh, to me, and 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 their names and my memories of them are what I was putting down on paper here for this book. Uh, in Shwetlana's case, um, she was actively talking to these people, uh, collecting their voices, and 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 making us uh, hear, hear them. In Bhopal, of course, uh, the scene is a bit different there. Uh, Jayanta Mahapatra, who does not belong to Bhopal, who, who is a poet from Orissa, actually uh, visits uh, Bhopal and, uh, and walks through the streets and he's uh, sort of uh, collecting data, so, so to say, um, for his poetry. So his whole collection called The Whiteness of Bone is around um, his experience and memory of Bhopal. So that is also something uh, that, that 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 sort of uh, happens uh, both in the book and uh, it happens in, in in real life. Now something interesting um, uh, for for you. Uh, this is something uh, again which uh, which just came and went. Uh, and and later when I was thinking about it, uh, it seemed to be something I still need to sort of fully figure out how how did this uh, relationship develop is there something really about mood in the book which was perhaps uh, di dictated by this particular fact so let me read it out from, from the book and, and and then maybe just uh, say a few things about it listening to chop his nocturnes during lockdown enables a gentle flow of recollection i'm amazed by what these 21 pieces for solo piano do for memory each time I play Nocturne, some street of face or moment or mood belonging to the past gently trembles in, in my head. A cow re and re food, what we call chewing the cut. Human beings chew the cut of memory. It is also called rumination, and memory is part of the mental activity of rumination. So chewing cut improves the cow's digestion and ruminating on things, including things past, allows um, us uh, to take uh, useful lessons from the past. 
so uh, so there is a you know a sort of di digestive element uh, uh, which 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 i'm sort of in in including in uh, uh, this very bodily sort of experience of remembering uh, music brings back memories but chopin's nocturnes uh, does it at a subtler level the music does not overwhelm you it reconnects you to the past the way a hand holds you and persuades you to travel along Listening to Chopin, I could hear the distinction between emotions and feelings. Emotions stir the blood. Feelings correspond to what surrounds you and introduces a greater ambience. Feelings connect you to the air, to nature. You can almost observe yourself, if not exactly in the objective sense. You observe with the sensuous attachment of one who is watching an intriguing film, unlike emotions. Feelings leave you a space to wonder, as does the night. Um, so uh, it just happened that you know uh, that when the whole lockdown uh, happened and uh, I started writing, I wanted uh, just one music, uh, some something very uh, silent and 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 soft, uh, not to really disturb me and take me away from my writing. And so I decided uh, on uh, Chopin's Nocturne, something I think I I was planning to hear for a long time. Also, because uh, there's this particular uh, song that I heard in this Turkish film "At the Edge of Heaven" by Fatih Akin, where there is, there is this uh, song which uh, keeps uh, going on in the background constantly throughout the film, and uh, that film uh, I learned through uh, one singer, uh, uh, one Turkish singer, uh, uh, is something that is sort of uh, uh, set to the tune, perhaps, or or something similar to uh, ch uh, 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 a small note in 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 Chopin's Nocturne. So I had that in mind, and I thought, let me play it. And so once I played it, that sort of became my mood for the lockdown. It 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 became my mood for the book. And so every day uh, throughout the lockdown, I only played absolutely nothing but. Uh, Chopin's Nocturne, and it is not that I uh, only wrote during the night. I in fact wrote a lot during the day. But even then, the, the, this this was the only piece of music. Uh, sorry, I was listening to, and um, I I wonder whether that sort of did something to um, the structure, the nature, and the tone of this book because. Uh, so far, people have told me that uh, that uh, they expected something very uh, sort of som uh, somber uh, uh, in this book, something really dark and 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 sort of sad. Uh, but uh, they were sort of uh, pleasantly surprised to read that uh, there was a lot of uh, lightness in the book. And I don't know whether uh, this uh, this lightness, which is but a very a melancholic lightness. Uh, happened uh, because of uh, the book uh, so uh, sorry because of uh, because of uh, Chopin's not uh, Chopin's nocturne uh, okay uh, now I would like to sort of uh, you know uh, share with you uh, this particular aspect uh, which I realized during the writing of the book um, and now when I'm uh, particularly rereading re it, even in the context of this talk, uh, in, in fact, when, when I was thinking of what to uh, say about uh, memory and lock lockdown, uh, this, this particular thought, I think, is, is something uh, probably quite new for us and uh, it's some, something that we, we, we can think, think on. Uh, and. Uh, and I'll, pro I'll probably end with 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 this thought, uh, you know, sharing this thought uh, with you. And this is for me a particular uh, thing which I think uh, sort of distances us uh, very firmly from the time of Bergson, uh, you know, when he wrote Matter and Memory, the time of uh, uh, Proust when he wrote The Remembrance of Things, Things Past, also Benjamin. Uh, the way they were looking at this relation between past and present, now we know that memory is about the past, you know, thought about or recapitulated or remembered in the present. Uh, it is, of course, uh, true that memory is 
uh, sort of you know uh, you can uh, say uh, take the memory uh, sorry take the example of uh, you know uh, traveling uh, traveling by train you know that that uh, or a local train or a long distance train you know depends on uh, how how fast or how how, how slow your uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, memory uh, uh, journey is uh, so like each uh, memory would be then you know uh, sort of each 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 station that uh, that comes and you pause and you go in in my case i, I remember the local train particularly because uh, like things happen really fast um, memories happen in very small durations so i was thinking about the local train uh, that you know it it travels from station to station it stops for a very short time you have a little bit to pick from there and and then then the train move, moves and you move along with it uh, or you know you are traveling by road and and there is uh, and you take turns and and with each turn you sometimes suddenly return and and that is a return to a certain um, aspect of memory so so these uh, these ideas of past and present and how uh, you know uh, people have I and mean, uh, Bergson has uh, Benjamin has thought about this question of the duration that how do you precisely formulate the idea of duration when does the past end when does the present begin and things like that because you have to somewhere perhaps make a very uh, strong uh, sort of uh, uh, you know a distinction conceptual cognitive distinction between past and present in order to uh, sort of place the idea of memory here i would like to break away from 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 this sort of distinction and uh, sort of propose this understanding that I, I i don't think that now uh, in in the sort of life we are living all all across the world that we can hold on to this conventional notion of what is past and what is present during these exceptional periods of time where there is too much weight on our mental faculties where our sensations and feelings are activated as an everyday basis also conversely numbed you know we are we are also numbed by uh, uh, so much of uh, uh, things that we are bombarded with every day uh, where simply too much is happening around us and not just around us but in the whole world you know in in, in including all that uh, so social media is circulating around us so this clear distinction between past and present is very very bluntly blurred so memory uh, then is i think you know no longer something that we can say anymore something that belongs to only the past and it, which occurs to us in the present but i think memory now for us is something that is occurring to us in the present and something which is happening in the present so so the, the distinction between past and present i think for us has now collapsed and in fact uh, you know uh, past and present does collapse in in memory because the past becomes present but what i am you know proposing here is slightly you know something different that uh, memory is actually something which is becoming present, which is completely becoming present. So, uh, so the distance, you know, so so you can no longer uh, measure uh, the distance between past and present vis-a-vis -vis time, but perhaps intensity. And and this is something that I think is new for our, our times that we are no, and and this is also uh, in a way perhaps. The time of the nightmare, you know, uh, the, this this is a very nightmarish time that uh, that that we are uh, going going through in many ways in our own personal lives, in in the life of the nation, in the life of the world. There are so many things really that are happening at a daily basis that uh, that you know you wake up and you think, oh, uh, did this happen yesterday? Did did this happen last 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 month? Uh, when we, uh, uh, so I I was taking a, a, a class. Uh, uh, of uh, you know, you know, uh, 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 you know, half a course of lyric poetry. Just when it ended, uh, and uh, and this whole thing happened, uh, and and then the lockdown started. Uh, I really uh, had to, uh, you know, uh, uh, find. Uh, I I found it very difficult that I was actually teaching and and visiting uh, the Purana Kila uh, with my students. Um, and we were reading poetry just a, 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 a month ago. I was totally lost, and and we all thought that this happened perhaps last last year. So what was happening when things happened? Uh, you know, things that happened uh, a long time ago uh, was perhaps nearer. Things that happened just then, you know, had had perhaps gone uh, far back. 
So, so the whole zigzag of past and present was really not happening in any conventional uh, mode that we were sort of um, attuned to or, 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 or we were aware of or uh, we could realize earlier. So this is something that I would propose uh, something new that uh, I think uh, probably ha has happened to us in the last year, uh, something about time that uh, we have really collapsed into uh, what I would call the nightmare of the present, uh, a sort of an absolute uh, time of the present, uh, where uh, we are really uh, uh, into that sort of, sort of time. So this is not even, you know, something, for example, uh, you know, that even we read, for example, in uh, some writer like Sibold, you know, Sibold being um, uh, one of our, uh, you know, uh, very, very uh, 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 memorable memoirists and who's also thinking back on the Holocaust and, and writing in a slow, detailed manner. I don't think we even have the luxury of a Sibold today uh, to really think back on our past, and right? Because the past is really on our head and we are experiencing the past every day. We are actually living in the past, present, present, past. I mean, I really don't know, uh, you know, how to distinguish the two anymore. And uh, let me, uh, uh, you know, finish uh, at this note and I'll probably take uh, questions and there uh, probably new things will come up. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Manash, for that. Uh, we are uh, we are open for questions now. So if there are any questions, uh, maybe you can raise your hand or uh, type it in the chat box. I already have Rashmi's hand up. So Rashmi, you can go ahead and ask your first question. Sorry, hi, hi, hi. Uh, hi. I actually thought I'd take this. Thanks a lot, uh, Manush. Uh, I'm very happy we could actually finally get you to do a talk. And we've been plotting it since your last book. So this is yeah. really nice. I thought I'll take, uh, listen to this from Kabun Park, you know, because you've dedicated the book to the tree outside your house. Yeah. For me, Kabun Park was like the space that kept me alive through the long down. Uh, you know, I mean, it helped me remain sane in many ways. And I think, uh, I mean, your talk was lovely and I look forward to reading the book. Uh, I got a message today saying that it's finally been dispatched. Great. So it should be at my home soon. Um, I think you brought up a lot of uh, kind of, you know, interesting things. You touched upon philosophy, you touched upon uh, literary form, the relationship between memory and uh, narrative writing, prose and so on. And this is something also that I have been kind of grappling with in this last year because I've been working on uh, a book on the moving image. Uh, it's called The Vanishing Point, uh, Moving Images After Video. And it's supposed to be like a, it was meant to be a retrospective of, you know, what happens within the sphere of the moving image uh, after the 1990s. Uh, okay. But it kind of so turned out that I started working on the book and we went into lockdown. So that relationship, which I had imagined would be one of a retrospective, actually became okay. almost impossible because it wasn't possible to, uh, you know, dive back into the past in any linear kind of logical way and wade through things systematically. So I found it kind of, you know, very, uh, um, what do I say? I mean, it, it, I, I could resonate with what you were saying in terms of uh, meandering through, you know, going, returning to different experiences in the past as you were writing. Mm -hmm. um, there were two things actually that I wanted to bring up. One is that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think, I feel that memory is the bridge between language and the world in the sense that when people, uh, you know, uh, suffer from conditions such as Alzheimer's, uh, right. It is the inability of your memory. It's the refusal of your memory to serve you anymore in some sense, right? And so uh, language and its relationship to the world begins to lose meaning. And uh, I have kind of you know, thought that the kind of memory that you um, experience or you construct through visual images is of a very yeah. different nature. Yeah. Uh, because precisely of some of the things that you mentioned, and you know, Proust has written quite a lot about vision and 
uh, Mary Reedy, and you know all of the writers actually that you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, and m- memory then in the visual image, which is is almost kind of uh, something a word that you used fleetingly but didn't go back to, which is forgetting. Uh-huh. And it's the edit, it's the cut between the two frames that actually also kind of constructs our relationship with how we relate to the moving image and you know the past in some sense mm-hmm. so that is one point i wanted to place uh, before you but uh, my question to you is uh, i mean I, you've commented very beautifully uh, in a very nuanced way on the changing nature of memory and in fact our experience of the past the relations between the present and the past um, many of in fact all of the writers you've uh, drawn our attention to are people who were very invested in understanding modernity. They were writing about modernity and, you know, writing about the modern experience, which uh, uh, you kind of make reference to as well. And the thing with uh, South Asia, let's say, is that, you know, I mean, this is it's kind of a old problem that mm. our relationship, uh, the relationship of our presence to our past never took the same kind of form as it did in Europe where the past in fact had to be rejected in order to become modern. Right. So I mean there was kind of a negotiation, there was a a tussle with the past and therefore the present needed to establish itself as an entity, the contemporary and uh, historically we've, that's not been our experience at least. Now it's very hard to say you know what is whether you can kind of uh, retain a cultural distinction anyway because of the kind of homogenous nature of technology. So, yeah. uh, so I, I do agree with you when you say that, you know, we, uh, memory has become about intensity and not about uh, time or distance. Uh, I also agree with you very strongly when you uh, spoke about the ghosts and spirits, uh, you know, that are, uh, are edging us or whatever, nudging us on. And I feel those ghosts and spirits actually begin at the moment of optical technologies. And you know, this whole idea of the ghost in the machine. Uh, And I wonder then if uh, Kundera, who I know is one of your favorite writers, and uh, you know, this idea of the the writer as genius, the writer as being able to capture the uh, pains and the possibilities of modernity, which are always fleeting. Uh, is a centered voice in some sense. And you spoke about the assemblage and you hinted towards Deleuze who draw upon Bergson. And I wonder if the visual kind of memory is not a more polyphonic memory, precisely because it's a bunch of ghosts and spirits who are also make murmuring along with us. Right. So it's not a coherent question. It's just a kind of, you know, jumbled response uh, to uh, respond to the many thoughts that you've laid out. Yeah, that's what I had to say. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Rashmi. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, uh, thank, thank you for that uh, lovely image uh, of uh, Carbon Park. And uh, I remember, uh, you know, uh, my memory of uh, Carbon Park is, is, is pretty uh, fresh. Uh, I quite enjoyed uh, being there when I was, uh, you know, uh, yeah, the first first time, in fact, when I had I had vi- visited uh, Bangalore, we had gone to the Kappan Park, and 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 I remember going to that library. I think it is there somewhere near uh, near nearby, and uh, I remember the 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 uh, the roses, uh, you know, uh, placed in a circular uh, uh, manner out outside the library, and I I remember the library. The library also pretty well. Uh, they have this oval uh, kind of shape in, in, in which the uh, you know uh, the uh, the shelves are structured. Uh, so yeah, so it it it, it brings actually nice uh, memories of Bangalore. And uh, yes, I mean that one one word I I, I, I particularly caught from what what, what you said uh, uh, on polyphony, and and uh, it precisely again uh, you know links to uh, what uh, I was. Uh, uh, thinking about uh, 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 Shvetlana Alexovich because Alexovich's uh, uh, novel or her novels are are precisely about the uh, polyphonic, uh, you know, uh, the polyphonic um, in literature and how how uh, when there is a 
there's a murmur and 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 where and it is also some somewhere you know uh, this is uh, such a nice way perhaps to also uh, sort of es escape uh, the you know uh, perhaps what what one may call uh, a little uh, a little uh, provocatively uh, the limitations of let's say somebody like pesoa uh, now it is uh, um, it is uh, i think pretty uh, uh, radically provocative to uh, to talk, talk talk about the limits of uh, pesoa because pesoa is uh, 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 you know the most uh, uh, radical writer in the sense that he actually went out of the uh, the uh, problem of the self and the i and and created created uh, this whole um, idea of multiple selves and the writer as a depersonalized sort of subject and 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 that that was probably uh, the most uh, uh, the most uh, radically creative uh, thing that happened in in literature but uh, perhaps uh, you know shwetlana goes uh, a step ahead because uh, uh, if we uh, think about the act of writing not only in aesthetic terms but also in radically ethical terms even though uh, pesoa uh, sort of uh, brings in the uh, brings in the uh, uh, you know uh, this this whole radical experience of uh, the uh, the radically other within uh, the 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 subject of uh, writing uh, shwetlana perhaps goes a step further and actually uh, brings all these vo voices from the real outside and 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 merges uh, it 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 with um, her own voice so so she anyway um, then you know loses her own own voice so uh, we don't really say so so in in pesoa's case if he is sort of just losing his name to other names or other writers you know other subjects of writing uh, shwetlana actually is doing the real polyphonic thing that you know she's actually going into the world and then collecting these voices and 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 sort of um, uh, bringing them for us and also opening up uh, the sort of wide landscape uh, where you know the writer is no longer alone the reader is not alone with the writer so so uh, so perhaps the most radically social sort of act you know um, that you can experience perhaps within the you know the reading and writing of lit of literature so which is i uh, which can i think make us really think about memory in 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 very fresh ways and when 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 we think of these sort of devastations or even we think of you know um con con conflicts where uh, um, people uh, you know uh, large groups of people uh, face violence which which they do in 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 india uh, pretty frequently where you have these um, these uh, mass you know these these events of mass violence where um, People, uh, you know, you know uh, so many people have uh, so many things to say, but then uh, you know uh, the uh, the pro problem that happens in uh, a certain kind of journalistic writing, for it, for instance, is that uh, you know you you don't really uh, you know these these voices are uh, approached and, and 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 spoken to and 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 their replies you get through a, a certain kind of structure which is which which is not really uh, you know creative and allows uh, these these uh, these voices to emerge uh, whereas they are uh, kind of structures in a certain um, a journalistic framework which is not uh, very cre creative i am not saying all kinds of uh, journalistic writing but most kind kind, kind of uh, journalistic writings uh, we find on on them so uh, perhaps we need to think uh, differently about approaching these events and um, and these in this 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 larger incidents where we can actually hear a lot of people uh, speak their experience and teach us something new about what it is to experience these things. Yeah, thank you. I think that's to be continued at 4S or something. Okay. Any more questions from the audience? If anyone has, I'm going to refrain myself from asking before I should give others a chance. I think Satvisha has a question. Uh, Satvisha, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask the question. Um, hello, sir. Uh, sir, I actually got a chance today to read the preface of your book. And uh, yes, uh, it's not exactly a question. It's more of a comment. And uh, I was intrigued by the way uh, the the idea of memory was implemented when we think about our daily life. 
but sir, at the same time, I wanted to exactly go about the entire process where we question our memory as well. There's this entire procedure when we think about a memory in isolation and when we think about that same memory when we are at a crowded space. But although during pandemic, uh, there was no human contact near us, there was isolation, but we also tend to make changes in the memory according to our own convenience at times as well. Uh, and we also have this tendency to never paint ourselves as the, I mean, we are either omnipresent or we are not the wrong person in a memory. So when those memories come back, when uh, it's, it's, it's not just haunting, it's more of a phase and uh, it, it, it takes you back to places where you might not even want to go back to. So that that was quite intriguing and interesting to me. And also I was trying to understand how technology plays an important role in the way we think about memories because, uh, so you talked about paranoia in the preface of it. And I also felt like a few days back, we attended a talk by uh, Patnini Re Mure, where she said that uh, our, our this entire idea of paranoia or the anxiousness that we get is because of the the absence of our understanding of technology as well at the same time. That creates an anxious space. And that also intrigues the way we think about stuff. Uh, so I just wanted to say that to what you read, uh, I mean, wrote as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Manash, sorry to intervene, but I was thinking we can maybe take a couple of questions yeah. together uh, due to the paucity of time yeah. so that you can answer them together. Yeah. Yes. Uh, any other, uh, Mukta, you have something to say as well? I can see that you've written a very long uh, chat. Do you want to unmute also and speak or should I read it out for you? Okay, looks like uh, I'll just read out what she's written. So basically she's saying that um, Ernest Renan offers a similar theory where he argues that it is a collective forgetting of a particular event. A particular event. Particular event of the past that brings a nation together in the present. Focusing on these two points then, isn't it possible that the memory of a forgotten narrative holds more weight than the one that, still, that is still in practice? That's a question about memory. Sure. Um, uh, I also have a question, so probably I'll just uh, intervene uh -huh. now. No, let me quickly finish the two, then then uh, you go. I think that'll be better. So I can. Sure, sure, sure. I think probably we'll have time for just one or two more questions. Sure, sure, uh -huh. sure. Okay. So very quickly, uh, the third question. Yes, uh, I in 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 fact, I was uh, reminded of something that uh, Sebald uh, says in the Rings of Saturn uh, uh, that 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 you know that. Um, how often he and i'm quoting from from him this is something i was uh, like i had kept uh, uh, you know aside if 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 if, if i need to uh, just mention this but this question has prompted this uh, perfectly so he's saying and i'll quickly uh, uh, read out this lovely quote from uh, uh, the rings of saturn where sebald is actually trying to uh, talk about uh, the french writer chateaubriand so I quote, but the fact is that writing is the only way in which I'm able to cope with the memories which overwhelm me so frequently and so unexpectedly. If they remained locked away, they would become heavier and heavier as time went on, so that in the end, I would succumb under their mounting weight. Memories lie slumbering within us for months and years, quietly proliferating until they are woken by some trifle and in some strange way blind us to life. How often this has caused me to feel that my memories and the labors expended in writing them down are all part of the same humiliating and at bottom contemptible business. And yet what would we be, uh, do without memory? So precisely, I mean, there are, there are difficult memories. There are memories we don't want to remember. We don't want to uh, write about. We want to forget them. And then some, some, sometimes in their way to, you know, then uh, uh, we sort of, uh, 
uh, dwell in that sort of uh, a very uneasy sort of gray gray zone between remembering and forgetting and, and whether we want to remember or not and then it is forced upon us and stuff like that and that and that is when we often uh, sometimes you know we we need certain kind of therapeutic care in 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 fact to handle uh, these memories um and yes i mean the 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 um, reference to reno is interesting because uh, the, the, you know a little while before the talk i was thinking about uh, the other phrase of uh, reno in, in 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 fact how he he talks about the nationalist imagination as as something uh which depends on what what he calls uh, these a uh, series of convergent facts right uh, so I was thinking about the series of con con converging facts and and how that the uh, the memory of a nation or the uh, the making of a nation itself uh, you know uh, kind of depends on 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 these sort of uh, facts sort of coming together and 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 this, there is sort of arrangement uh, to to uh, to this so sort of uh, coming together of different things something which uh, then you know Benedict Anderson also plays upon where where he brings some different aspects. Uh, where uh, and Anderson also in in impact just like Reno uh, talks about how forgetting is also kind of part of uh, part of the nation's um, so-called memory. Uh, here, you know, uh, I would uh, also uh, think about uh, how uh, then you know uh, nations in, in encounter uh, this whole idea of of memory because there is some some somewhere though not you know uh, uh, very interesting to uh, uh, think it, it in terms of a binary like true and false but also the gaps uh, sort of say um, uh, of very fundamental gaps to our uh, you know discourse of the nation for for example just uh, you know I, i'll leave you with one small example uh, but a very very fundamental one that how for example the whole nation building national a list uh, sort of uh, imagination even large part of our historiography you know, our history writing on the nation also leaves out so much of partition it is you know very difficult to 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 write about the birth of the nation without partition partition in fact is that moment of forgetting which is often a conscious moment for a lot of people who write about the nation so that for for me is also uh, you know a conscious act uh, which of forgetting with we in India particularly uh, have sort of um, had to tell dealt with and now you know later that you know, now we have to really go back and and and, and really look back at our uh, nation's memory and 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 disturb it uh, with 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 these very haunting uh, you know haunting events. Yes, so. Yeah. Yeah, Manash, thank you so much. Uh, my question, if I may take the liberty to ask, I don't see any other question being popped up. Okay, Karan has a question. Okay. Okay, I'll quickly say my question and maybe yeah. you can uh, together take Karan's question also. So my question is more on uh, the terms of the craft of writing, not in terms of understanding the theoretical grounds of how memory has worked in the last one year for all of us. Somewhere we have a common memory of many things that we experienced in the outer world but the inner space itself grow, you know got different kind of memories which also had a common sense of you know belongingness for example the act of cooking or cleaning or being in the present so right. uh, and you know just having to or forced to rather think about the present like you might be yes. thinking about the past right being maybe romantically at some level longing or having that nostalgia of the past but you were very much in the present and that present is what one thing we had to accept we we couldn't escape the present as much as we you know we were in the past the present is what which was very real it was the one that we didn't know about uh, we still don't know about right the invisible virus and the kind of the senses the kind of fear that it uh, kind of triggered in us so in that sense the past and the present were not so much like you said they were not different or kind of divided but the fact that you had to make sense of the present was very compelling which comes to the question of writing for me because then tell me if i'm understanding i one of the interview that one of your interviews said that you know the act of writing is also about the present in the sense it gives you as much as you think before you write and 
an experience can trigger you wanting to write or you will journal your idea or you will journal your experience but the act of writing has to be in the present and do you think that for a writer since you have been writing for a while in the literary space do you think that isolation that 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 forced uh, isolation or that space that you have the time that you have for yourself can give rise to writing like you were you had to write what you wrote like you know it was something that had to be out of your mind it should it should your pen had to move or your typewriter had to move to get the you know story going but was what about the writing as a form as a narrative itself does that the craft of writing requires that present commitment where you know that everything else has to shut down for you to sit and write and think and you know go back to your memory and recollect those memories and write so in terms of is it the act of action or is it the idea that comes first do you you know that's one question that i want to ask uh and yeah okay that's i hope i was clear yeah. uh yeah okay and uh, karan also has a question uh karan can you also unmute yourself and quickly ask your question we are really really short on time no yeah, sure uh hi manish uh, so my i have two questions and one of them intertwines with sonia's very very much so i was also thinking that when we talk about uh, time and memory uh, we also automatically talk about narrative like time and narrative uh, it's a famous concept uh, as i'm sure you're aware of so i was wondering if you have structured uh, time in in a in a particular way throughout throughout the novel for instance like uh, uh kundera in his novel that you borrowed from also does like he he structures his novels as as a not just this one but multiple of it, like more of his novels as a just like a symphony right like seven movements of a symphony so seven parts and so i was wondering if you were also so strict about uh the structuring of time throughout throughout the novel and my second should i also ask my second question right away sure sure yeah so it was also about so uh i read this idea recently uh i so i was reading mark curie's about time so he says that memory narratives are also narratives of self analysis so what he what he tries what he means is uh that one when one is trying like when one is writing in like writing a memory narrative one one is trying to find their identity right like or their self through unearthing of memories so they're also introspect like the narrative is also introspecting upon that unearthing so that that that's how it becomes self anal like self an analytical so i was wondering if you were also conscious of that uh in the sense that you were unearthing memories and then you were also introspecting that unearthing yeah that that's what i wanted to ask thank you uh yeah so uh, to begin with um uh, sonia's question uh, uh look i mean uh, the way i experienced it you know uh, uh, so i was also uh, say you know i was also cooking da uh, daily uh, and uh, there was absolutely no freedom uh, from not cooking and going to a kind of uh, a nearby food food joint and uh, enjoying myself i had to i knew from the uh, from day one we knew that you know we had to cook our, our, ourselves and so i got into that whole thing uh, pretty much because i i generally cook but i am a you know kind of, kind of lazy cook and i get bored and and all all all, all that but those luxuries had sort of disappeared so uh, so uh, what what the uh, so that is where and 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 of and of course we have to uh, you know buy the buy the stuff that we need for our our our, our, our daily use and 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 those things also we had to sort of think think about but for me what happened is particularly with regard to cooking and like one other thing that i was uh, you know kind of doing at an everyday uh, basis and also with uh, some something which takes time and effort and and some thought uh, the cooking actually helped the writing the cooking helped me uh, calm uh down uh, generally remain calm and also structure cooking is also a structure i have written in this book about a uh, certain similarities between uh, cooking and uh, and write, uh, writing uh, so i uh, also uh, experienced uh, so to say you know this uh, this very interesting uh, uh, sort of uh, similarities uh, similar resonances between cooking and uh, writing and uh, like i said the cooking uh, 
uh, you know uh, really uh, sort of help help me structure my day uh, and and calm me and also uh, you know find this kind of uh, uh, ways to even think because cooking you know uh, is also when i'm cooking i am i'm i'm, I'm thinking and uh, no i'm i'm not taking so much as really you know spoil spoil what i'm cooking uh, but uh, but generally my mind is uh, you know there and and it is uh, also you know cooking is a, a very very uh, calm calm job and uh, so that is happening and so in that sense you know this this whole uh, craft you're saying of light of lighting you know where you have to move in and out i mean uh, what what you were uh, trying 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 to say uh, as i understood is is that there, there were these two spaces right there is one space Where you sit and and remember and write, and there's this other space where you have to uh, deal with the world, where to deal with the with the with the present. So for me, uh, there was a sort of a porousness between the uh, uh, two spaces: the space where I'm sitting and writing, and the other space where I'm moving out of, you know, going to the uh, terrace, watching the trees, or 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 cooking, uh, or 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 just sitting or or lying down. So for me, um, there was a sort of porousness. I I never thought that I had moved out of one space into another. so for for me all of it was part and and the very fact that all of this came into the book itself came into my writing meant that that whole uh, distinction uh, the very way i said the past and present had sort of erased even between different uh, you know aspects of the present itself you know because they were like uh, you know different presents uh, so to say you know a uh, uh, a multi layered present uh, that we were uh, sort of living in Th- those were a uh, sort of porous uh, you, you know they were not like uh, divided by any sort of consciousness you know that oh this is this and that is that it uh, so so there was in that sense you know there was no if i may put it uh, there, there was no division of labor or i at least did not feel that uh, there was any division of labor i i, I was sort of uh, cooking writing doing everything at the same time one thing was going into the other uh, you, you know over, overlapping so to say so that in in fact i think made it more enjoyable uh, for 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 me to experience it as a whole so there was this uh, wholeness to this whole thing of writing it, it wasn't kind of divided uh, you know with uh, vis-a-vis other acts in terms of at least the way i lived it of course in real time you do you know different things together that is um, that is um, a very practical uh, sort of fact but we don't live facts we we live in our minds and and there you know i i, I think it was all uh, sort of nicely um, blurred uh, and uh, now now to come to uh, current's question yeah i mean um uh no uh, th- that second part you, uh, you you said you know i i don't really relate to that part because i was not really looking for a self identity or losing identity or trying to find myself sort of thing i was trying to find some something and and i was trying to find meaning that is true but that meaning i would not associate with just me as an author as a subject or whatever it was just the meaning of life and life uh, uh, and i being just a part of life i being um, you, you know some somebody who was alive and a subject of life so it was more of life that i was interested in and the book is perhaps a tribute to life uh, rather than to my you know to 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 some anchor of the self that i was really looking for yes i was looking at 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 certain moments of the past and try to uh, relate my past to uh, you know to the present and all 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 sorts of things but if you read the book i think you may experience uh, that uh, there is a sort of uh, breaking down of the subject into different aspects of life and i was perhaps trying to you know sort of tie myself relate myself to this largest idea of life because what the lockdown did was you know disconnect us from life uh uh so 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 that radical disconnection from life is what i was trying to do so i was connected to life so life was the sort of you know bigger subject of worry for me than just the self and the, the 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 self had to just kind of re reconnect all right i think we have come to the end of the session uh we can't possibly go beyond this but uh, i think the conversations can definitely go beyond this uh, we would like to definitely uh, read your entire book uh, i'm sure the students here would be very interested and uh, yeah now that you have written a book that all of us think or thought that they should have also written i think uh, you are leaving us with uh, many ways to sort of think about the year that we all have lived as a collective memory and also as an individual uh, memory and you know experience that we had so 
we'll continue the conversation as we go along uh, but i would like to take this opportunity to thank you once again for your time and for sharing something that was so relatable and at uh, many levels also something that we need to keep thinking about right i mean i think you're paving a way for uh, you know the human experience to you know take a little shift in the way we have come to live this modern existence right so this transitory passiveness that we got through the lockdown has really given us some food for thought that we are all trying to sort of you know uh, correlate or bring or continue even after the pandemic is over or when we are back to our so called the normal normalcy of uh, things so thank you for that on the behalf of the entire department and christ university Uh, i'm sure we'll uh, get more chances to uh, have this conversation again and thank you the audience uh, who has been uh, very patiently uh, there those who stayed back so thank you once again um, and uh, uh, i just want to add one thing sonia if, uh, yes in, please to add to your thank you of course but manu you are reading the preface to your book uh, in class today and one of the students said it's 17th march today It's exactly a year to the date when your refrigerator broke down, wow. and yeah. I didn't realize that you know we are scheduling your talk on this day, but it's a happy coincidence. Let's see. Thank After you. a year, yes, yes. I think March very much brings all the kind of memories because even we went to uh, campus only I think around the 15th or the 16th was our last day, uh, and now we have a talk on the lockdown and the memory under lockdown. So I think it was very timely talk. Uh, uh thank you so much once again uh thank you rashmi uh for actually uh, you know having manash to be with us uh thank you everyone uh, we will be back with our next mesatera session as soon as it is ready to go thank you so much have a good evening bye bye thank you manash thank you so much yeah